हॅलो गाईज आय एम डॉक्टर रवींद्र सावरकर अँड आय वेलकम यू बॅक टू मेड स्कूल दिस व्हिडिओ इज पार्ट टू ऑफ द सिरीज ऑन चेस्ट एक्सरे इन दिस व्हिडिओ वी विल सी हाऊ अनाटॉमिकल स्ट्रक्चर इन दी चेस्ट लुक ऑन नॉर्मल चेस्ट एक्सरे बिफोर डिस्कसिंग एनिथिंग फर्दर यू शूड रिमेंबर दॅट अनाटॉमिकल स्ट्रक्चर्स शूड बी एक्झामिन फॉर नॉर्मल सी ऑर एबनॉर्मलिटी ओनली वेन एक्सरे इज टेक्निकली करेक्ट If you want to know about the technical aspect of chest x-ray please watch part 1 of this series link for the same is given in i button trachea is visible as a radiolucent structure just behind the spinous processes it is midline in position but sometimes with slight deviation to right trachea can be pulled to the same side by pathologies like fibrosis or collapse or push to the opposite side in pathologies like pleural effusion or pneumothorax luminal narrowing in the trachea or foreign body in the trachea can be appreciated on chest x-ray normally trachea divides into left and right bronchus at the level of fourth thoracic vertebra this point is called as carina the first thoracic vertebra can be identified as the vertebra to which posterior end of first rib is attached Fourth thoracic vertebra can be counted downwards from it. Right bronchus is more in line with trachea and it's wider than left bronchus. This features of right bronchus makes right lung vulnerable for aspiration. Left bronchus is at an angle to trachea. The angle between right and left bronchus is called as carinal angle. This angle is normally 40 to 80 degrees. carinal angle is widened in cases of left atrial enlargement subcarinal lymphadenopathy or mass lesion hyla are radio opaque structures between lungs and mediastinum structure in each hilum are pulmonary vessels bronchi and hilar lymph nodes normally left hilum is slightly above the level of right hilum but both are present at the level between 5th to 7th thoracic vertebra hilum can become more prominent in perihilar pneumonia or hilar lymphadenopathy this prominent structure in right hilum is right interlobar pulmonary artery and this stump like structure in left hilum is left pulmonary artery both this structure can be enlarged in pulmonary artery hypertension and pulmonary embolism On chest x-rays lungs are divided into zones and not lobes both lungs are divided into three lobes each by two horizontal lines dividing lung fields into three equal zones these zones are upper middle and lower zones if a vertical line is drawn dividing each lung into equal half then each zone is further divided into medial and lateral part So for sake of description if any pathology is present here it will be said to be present in the left middle medial zone likewise if any pathology is present here it will be said to be present in right lower lateral zone now let's understand why lungs are divided into zone and not lobes on chest x rays now let's imagine a lateral view of right lung As you all know it is divided into three lobes that is apical middle and lower lobe now let's imagine three similar consolidations consolidation 1 present in upper lower lobe consolidation 2 present in middle lobe and consolidation 3 present in lower apical lobe even though their actual location is different on chest x-ray each consolidation will produce similar radio opacity at same location Similar overlaps are present in other areas of right as well as left lung. That's why lobular location of pathologies cannot be ascertained on chest x-ray. So to avoid confusion, lung fields on chest x-rays are divided into zones and not lobes. Lung fields have reticular opacities like this dividing into tree and branches pattern. These are formed by small airways and pulmonary vessels. 
that's why it is called as bronchovascular markings normally these markings are most prominent in lower zone and they are not traceable till the lateral border of lung field if you look closely in this x ray also these markings are not traceable beyond this line so bronchovascular markings are considered prominent if they are more prominent in upper and middle zone than in lower zone and they are traceable till the lateral border of lung fields heart occupies the central part above the diaphragm right border from above downwards is formed by superior vena cava right atrium and inferior vena cava left border of cardiac shadow from above downward is formed by arch of aorta also called as aortic knuckle then left atrial appendage and left ventricle size of heart shadow can be enlarged in cardiomegaly to confirm the presence of cardiomegaly cardiothoracic ratio is used cardiothoracic ratio or ctr is calculated as the widest transfer width of heart shadow divided by the widest transfer width of thoracic cavity cardiomegaly is said to be present if ctr is more than 0.5 on pa view and more than 0.6 on ap view let's understand this with an example suppose the widest transfer width of heart shadow is 14 cm and the widest transfer width of thoracic cavity is 33 cm then the ctr would be 0.42 so in this x ray cardiomegaly is not present Let's see how diaphragm looks normally on chest x-ray. Normally the right dome of diaphragm is higher than left dome. But how much higher? This difference in level of right dome and left dome is 2 to 3 cm or one intercostal space anteriorly. So right dome more than 3 cm higher than left dome is abnormal. If the left dome is higher than right dome it is abnormal. dome of diaphragm can be pulled up by the pathologies like lung collapse post lobectomy or pushed down due to lung hyperinflation in emphysema it can be pushed up by abdominal pathologies the dome of diaphragm can also be raised due to phrenic nerve palsy radiolucent shadow of fundic gas can be present below left dome of diaphragm but normally there is no radiolucency of gas below right dome presence of gas shadow below right dome of diaphragm in standing x ray indicates pneumoperitoneum due to intestinal perforation diaphragm forms two important landmarks on chest x ray first is costophrenic angle which is angle between lateral thoracic wall and dome of diaphragm This angle is normally 30 degrees. Costophrenic angle is blunted in cases of pleural effusion and it is widened in cases of emphysema due to flattening of dome of diaphragm. The second landmark is cardiophrenic angle which is angle between heart border and dome of diaphragm. The cardiophrenic angle is blunted in moderate to severe pleural effusion and local mass lesions. Next structures to be analyzed in chest x-ray are bones including clavicle and ribs. Clavicle is examined for any fracture and erosions. As discussed in previous video, ribs appear tilted on PA view with anterior end being lower than posterior end. anterior end of first rib is always below clavicle if anterior end is above clavicle then it is cervical rib ribs are examined for presence of any fracture margin of ribs are normally smooth they can be eroded in cases of malignancies and less commonly in tuberculosis and benign lesions normally anterior and posterior end of ribs looks parallel to each other and intercostal spaces on each side are more or less equal ribs can be approaching each other or crowded with unequal intercostal spaces in cases of lung fibrosis collapse 
एंड इन पोस्ट लोबिकटोमी केसेस इन नेक्स्ट वीडियो वी विल डिस्कस चेस्ट एक्सरेज विथ एबनॉर्मेलिटीज ऑफ रेस्पिरेटरी सिस्टम दैट इज ऑफ ट्रकिया हाइला एंड लंग्स थैंक यू फॉर वॉचिंग दिस वीडियो टिल द एंड If you have any query or suggestion please write it down in comment section If you like my work please like this video and share it with your friends To get notified about next video upload please subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon Till next video take care and keep learning